Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Laurent Ferrier Gallet Annual Calendar Montre Echo. You can see and you can purchase this, one of the hottest watches of the first half of the 2018 model year, on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. And please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally, complete pricing details for this stainless steel manual wind annual calendar. Geneva Upstart Laurent Ferrier, founded by a man whose competence in high complications dates back to the 1970s, is one of the it independents of the moment in an era when independent horology has become as hip as the celebrity chef and the store architect. Watchmakers like Ferrier, who are both a man and a brand, are in the spotlight, but not all are of equal merit, and truth be told, only a few truly excel in terms of mechanics, aesthetics, and total value. This watch, with a retail price of around 40000 new, immaculate finishing, impeccable pedigree, and a little bit of a wink and a nod cheeriness of its style, has to be considered one of the finest offerings in the independent horology segment because it's so everyday usable. 40 millimeters in stainless steel, you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it sits well. It has a vintage officer style look about it with a little bit of a potbelly case profile, 12 0.8 millimeters thick. It's nicely domed, so it will slide underneath a dress cuff. And you'll note that from lug to lug, it's quite compact and traditionally proportioned. Though it appears broad across the wrist, it's a tidy 46.9 millimeters across my arm. And you'll note how I have plenty of clearance on both sides of the wrist. There's absolutely no lug overlap. Now, for those who are wondering, all in stainless steel, yes, you are paying for the watchmaking and the style. There's no mandatory precious metal premium about this watch. As a result, it's solid, though not unusually or preternaturally heavy on the wrist. Simple, unconstrained movement to the strap means you can pull it straight down around the tight curve of a smaller wrist, and the strap is a substantial piece. Matte, rectangular scale alligator leather with a lightly contrasting gray stitch. It's unbolstered, features folded edges, and on the underside, a delightfully luxurious suede texture. Absolutely original, much appreciated, and one of the most comfortable underlinings I've encountered. The watch also features a Laurent Ferrier full deployment clasp finished within, low in profile without, and adding an extra measure of security while donning or removing at bedside. Now I'm going to focus in a little bit on the dial, and let's talk about this dial because it is sensational. Handsome in its execution, there's just enough color to make it lively and contemporary. You'll note the radial date with all blue date numerals, save the 31st of the month, red pointer style date indicator, asagai or spear in style, white hands at center. Note it's a crosshair dial. There is a concentric circular grain about the anth anthracite finish on the hour track and then inboard, let's see if we can capture it, there we go. There's a vertical satin finish. Also note the sharp cut of the stepped apertures beautifully balanced dial with bilateral symmetry. The cut of the apertures is lightly sloped to transition gradually from the plane of the dial down to the discs themselves, so it's not simply a sheer drop out of the dial to the discs. Thoughtful. You'll also note that there's a little bit of a step to the radial date as well as the hour track, so the dial is slightly dished and has a handsome depth to it. The case surrounding is classically inspired by the Laurent Ferrier school watch of yore, a theme in the contemporary collection, several school watch inspired cases which have this general pocket watch, welded lug, officer's watch aesthetic are available. Here Laurent Ferrier combining its most contemporary calendar complication with its most traditional case form. Almost all sensuous compound curves, the few straight lines are in the lugs themselves as well as the junction point of case back, bezel, and mid case. You also note it has a handsome swell to it such that it reflects light in interesting ways. Bending and reflecting and bouncing the light even as the dial seems to soak it all up. Now we should talk about some of the refinements. So I'm going to get as close as I can here without losing the focus. Some of the refinements that make this watch special. First and foremost, you need no pushers or tools to actuate the calendar functions. The day of the week is cycled using the pusher adjuster at 10 o'clock and then all functions of the radial date and the month of the annual calendar are actuated using a quick set in the intermediate crown position that allows you to set the date bidirectionally but also set the month bidirectionally. You'll note there is a 
subseconds with its own crosshair architecture and appreciate the attention to detail of the differential finish, the countersink of the register, and the fact that the four corners of the subseconds feature a small splash of red color. The crown, traditional semi-onion in profile, and that is a, a term of art, onion in profile. Nevertheless, the highlight of the watch, at least in terms of finishing and graphics, has to be considered the movement. What do I mean by graphics? Well, this is a self-consciously styled movement. Parts of it are designed to evoke the original Laurent Ferrier double spiral tourbillon, but it is considerably simplified. There's only one interior angle. This is not one of the almost baroque movements that Laurent Ferrier has issued. The fifth in-house caliber, it's designed to make the price point possible without compromising on the actual elements of finish. So what's there is spectacular. It's simply not as complex in its architecture as some of the others. You'll note that it features a full ruthenium coat, so an unusual coloration, as well as a richly textured Cote de Genève, which you can see feature the hallmark of real and not stamped Cote de Genève, which is a variant of what we would call gradient on a dial. If you can imagine the gradient of a Patek Philippe Nautilus dial, see how they sweep from light on one side to dark, light to dark. That gradient texture indicates a true abrasive laid Cote de Genève. And you'll note perfectly aligned across the bridges, beautiful mirrored finish to the countersinks of the jewels as well as the enclage, which you can see well when I turn the watch flush to the camera. You can begin to see some of that glint and gleam off the bridges that characterizes the hand finished and mirrored bridges. That is the anglage, that is the rounded mirrored surface between the horizontal and the vertical sections of the bridge. You'll also note that all of the screw heads are black polished, and you can see that as I turn the watch flush to the camera, everything that is black polished turns jet black. The highest standard of optical finish, all of their slots are also chamfered. There is a tight and even prolage across the base plate, and you'll note the architecture, though simple, is accomplished. A large mainspring barrel manually wound endows the watch with 80 hours of power reserve. The balance is free sprung so it can take and hold a precise regulation and even withstand some bumps and violent concussions on the wrist. It's not a sports watch but the free sprung architecture does mitigate against shock. You'll also note that it features a relatively stately 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate. Pivoting on 23 joules you can see the train is simple. Mainspring barrel, center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel balance. And and then it has a slight overcoil architecture about its hairspring designed to reduce the positional effect of gravity in which different positions relative to gravity can cause the watch to run at different rates. The overcoil mitigates against that. Adjusted in an impressive six positions, most chronometers are only adjusted in five. The standard of quality and attention to detail is high. You'll also note the case back power reserve. Indicateur Reserve de Manche, it features both a gold scale and a sunburst blazon inner anthracite face. A pleasure to wind manually, as you may wonder, and significantly for any manual wind watch, yes, it winds beautifully. It has just enough of a gradient, a resistant, a detent to the spring that you can truly appreciate the tactile sensation of winding this watch yourself. Annual calendar, so it only needs to be adjusted once per year. During the transition from February to March, you can see the finishing. Again, you can see the the gleam along the rim of every surface is immaculate. And I promised you one interior angle, and here you can see it. The tight cleft on the cock for the escape wheel. The escape wheel itself, an incredible piece of micro-mechanics, skeletonized and gossamer in its profile. This is anything but a generic part. Both the lever and the escape wheel, handsome, almost skeletonized, completely evacuated, appearing almost like snowflakes cast in metal. It's a fascinating watch to examine in detail, as well as the macro aspect, as the watch is simply handsome on the wrist. So whether you prefer the wide view or close hauled, this is a watch that gratifies and rewards. One of the finest values in independent high horology from a rock star brand of the moment. You can see and you can purchase this Laurent Ferrier Galli annual calendar Montre Ecole on our website.